Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday. It is the 18th day of March 2020. Happy Friday. I hope you and your family are healthy and safe today. I hope the needs of you and your family in terms of food and shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders whose primary job is to save lives. And those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks clean, as well as those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings upon the men and women trying to rescue, deliver, recover the children, the teenagers, and the adults from the clutches of human trafficking, from the clutches of sex slavery, from prostitution and child prostitution, pornography and child pornography, as well as child molestation and pedophilia. Blessings upon those men and women and upon those victims. And double curses on the perpetrators, the perverts and the profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women and children on the streets of the United States right now. And millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. Today I want to talk about the future. The future at point guard for the New York Knicks. Yesterday, Tom Thibodeau had a press conference at the practice. The Knicks tonight are going to be playing the Washington Wizards at Madison Square Garden. Generally speaking, the Knicks have not done well Uh I don't know when they started Friday Night Knicks. I think it was maybe 2013 when they started the new format of Friday Night Knicks. And it's nice, but they don't seem to do well on Friday night. I don't know why they never seem to win on Friday night. But, um, in fact, I think it was Friday night they lost to Phoenix, right? I think it was a week ago, Friday night, two weeks ago, they lost to Phoenix. And, um, you know. They just not had some some good performance on Friday night. Now, sometimes they do win big, but obviously they don't lose every game. But Friday nights has not been kind. So, um, but you know, let's get it. Let's see if they can win it uh, tomorrow night. I'll look at it and review it, and hopefully be looking at it with a smile on my face after they win the ball game. But yesterday, uh, Tom Thibodeau had a uh, press conference after practice yesterday. Um, Said some interesting things. The thing about Tom Thibodeau, uh, I like him generally. He's driving all of us crazy with some of his, shall we say, prehistoric ideas about rotations and who earns minutes and how and all of that. Um, but what, what, what yesterday, you know, reminded me of why I like him as a coach and I like him in terms of this I love basketball and I love the science of the game. Um, you know, the, the athleticism, obviously, of the game, the beauty of the game of basketball, particularly professional basketball and more, of course, specifically New York Knicks basketball. And yesterday during the press conference, just, you know, him talking about strategies, him talking about sets and, and, and how he runs his offense. You could just see how much he loves the game. And I appreciate that. Even though, you know, if they fired him today, I wouldn't cry about it. But um, you got to appreciate how much he loves the game. And, 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 and you know what? We may not like some of the things he does. Um, you know, he may, I mean, his stubbornness, like I said, I've meant, you know, did a few videos, stubbornness that cross over into stupidity. Even that, I just appreciate that we have a coach that's into the game that much. That, you know, even though he, you know, I don't know what he's seeing, but he loves the game. You know, he does love the game. He loves the game. It comes through. It's in his blood. It's in his pores. It's in his soul. He loves the game. And so I appreciate that. I just want to say that about him. But um, it's going to be interesting next season. I'm thinking of next season because, um, okay, so yesterday, <clears throat> I'm, I always try to be real. See, some of y'all are so used to the NBA 2K spirit that you can't be real. Like, don't come at me talking about, let's go get Shea Gildress Alexander. We're not getting 
Shea Gilders Alexander. Oklahoma City is not, Sam Presti's not an idiot. He's not going to let, regardless. <laughs> and, and Shea Gilders Alexander may or may not like Oklahoma City, but Sam Presti's not the Philadelphia general. He, no, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he's a cornerstone of the future, even with Josh Giddy. So that's what I'm saying. Let's don't suggest stuff that's just not going to happen. Okay. We're not getting him. We're not getting Chris Paul. You know, we're not getting these guys. You know, let's be realistic. All right. About what we can really get. Now, uh, on the trade market, the Knicks, you know, could acquire, but we don't know what the cost is of whatever player might be available that we don't know or who they're negotiating with that we don't know, right? So I don't want to deal with the trade market today. I want to deal with four point guards that are possibilities. Possibilities not only for next year, but possibilities to be the long-term answer at point guard for the New York Knicks. Realistic possibilities based on, like one of them is a, free agent, unrestricted. That's Jalen Brunson. One of them is a restricted free agent who probably is leaving his team. That's Colin Sexton. One of them is in the draft. That's Ty Ty Washington. The other one is already on the Knicks and he hasn't gotten a lot of minutes, but he has shown a lot of promise. That's Deuce McBride. I'm not mentioning Emmanuel quickly as the long-term solution at point guard because I don't believe he is. I think he's a long-term answer as a shooting guard coming off the bench. I don't believe he's the long-term answer at point guard, okay? So some of you who are big fans of Emmanuel quickly might be upset. Don't be upset. <laughs> he's just, this is just how I see Emmanuel quickly. I do not see him as a full-time point guard. I see him as a guy that can spot minutes at point guard if you need him to. But long-term, he is a Lou Williams, Jamal Crawford, Six man style guy, you know, I can create offense for you. Um, so I'm not looking at him as one of the long term solutions at point guard. And obviously, I'm not looking at Alec Burks as the long term solution at point guard. But yesterday, uh, one of the conclusions I came to is that the Knicks are going to shop, um, mo you know, a few of their veterans, put it that way. I think Nerlens Noel obviously is going to get shopped, uh, if they can get rid of him because of his. Unavailability. Unavailability in the NBA is, is a curse. Like if you show yourself unavailable, like they just cut Samanchik, some of y'all's favorite G League guy, Lucas Samanchik. Um, why? He's hurt. He's hurt a lot. He miss when he's on, he's productive, but he's not available. The best ability in the NBA is availability. That hurt Frank Nilakina to me too. You know, um, I thought he was just getting nicked up and he'd be back when his first couple of years, when he was getting hurt all the time, every time he seemed to have a big opportunity to show what he can do, hamstring pull, groin pull. He had a lot of that groin stuff, knee soreness. Then he went to Dallas and they put him in a rotation, knee soreness, groin pull. I'm like, okay, that's why he's, he's never going to be what I, what I believe his talents say he could be because he's not available. Lucas Samantha, not available. Okay. And so that's a big thing. Now here's Nerlens Noel unavailable, right? He was available for most of last year. He did get hurt a couple of times last year, but crunch time at the end, he was available. But now he's not signed the deal. He's not available. So they're going to try to move him. They're going to try to, I believe it would be between Burks and Fournier. Burks is the easier guy to move because Fournier, as you know, he's shooting the lights out for the Knicks. I mean, say what you want about his defense, and I hate his defense, but he is shooting the lights out. He's a, sh a proven shooter. So, you know, there's that. And that's going to that's gonna be magnified over the summer, his, his shooting ability, even beyond what it is now. And I mean magnified, by the time they sit back and think about it, they'll be like, oh, now we can't lose him for Fournier. Plus, he's on a th three-year deal. This will now be a two-year deal. It will be harder to move him on a two-year deal. Um, whereas... Uh, Nerlens is an expiring deal next year. So is Burks. Um, I think they're going to keep Derrick Rose because that's a Tom Thibodeau favorite. But mm, Tom's going to be disappointed with some of the moves they make this summer. And so, But I think Burks is going to be moved. And I think uh, Nerlens Noel is going to be moved. 
Taj Gibson's contract is not guaranteed for next year, so they might bring him back on a vet middle uh, as a mentor. He'd be good for that. And then again, spot minutes when we need him. Uh, but I can see that. And again, we talked about possibility of losing Mitchell Robinson. But the, the Alec Burks situation, if he moves, that opens up minutes in the rotation for the wings we have. And we have a number of wings, we, you know, promising wings. Of course, we have R.J. Barrett. Then you're talking about Quentin Grimes, who may be back tonight. You're talking about Cam Reddish. These are really good wings that we have. And so to open up minutes, you if you keep Fournier, you're going to need so you're starting RJ, and if you're starting Fournier, that means Cam and Quentin in mob deep, right? Which is really good. Um, so that's probably, and then the only hole we have is point guard, which we all know. I mean, we've been having a whole left point guard for a very long time. So um, a long-term answer at that point. We've had short-term, you know, one-year, two-year guys, but we've never had a long-term solution at point guard since then. The last long-term point guard we had, I think, was Stefan Marbury. That's the last guy that was really good long-term solution at point guard. I mean, he had his flaws, obviously, but he nobody can deny he was talented. You know, 2010 dude. So anyway, there's four guys. Deuce, Brunson, Colin Sexton, and Ty Ty. Let's start with Ty Ty. A lot of y'all been really hoping and wishing and Ty ty you know, and a lot of the mock drafts have the Knicks taking Ty Ty. I never was high on Ty Ty as a Knicks point guard. And I, I chose to do this video today based on what happened in the NCAA tournament. If you watch Ty Ty, you saw that, he, you know, he just didn't show up, you know, and, and they lost to a team that was not really on paper supposed to be able to play with them. St. Francis, St. Mary's, whatever. <laughs> they lose. First round of the NC2A tournament, Ty Ty has one, has five points. Now, I recommend that Ty Ty Washington go back to school for one year with, with Sharp and they would form the one of the, you know, the best backcourts in the nation next year. And they would both be top 10 or top five, uh, picks in the NBA draft next year. Um, now, but let's just talk about, let's assume. Let's make an assumption in our hypothesis, hypothesis here, that Ty Ty is going to come out this year. Okay. And let's forget about last night's game. I just want to use that to sober some of y'all because some of y'all, I think, are just too crazy about this kid. And I don't think he's all that, but I think he's solid, but I don't think he's the long term solution at point guard for the Knicks. So let's make an assumption that he's coming out. If Tom Thibodeau is going to coach start of next season. They're not drafting Ty Ty Washington. I'm trying to be real with y'all. You know, let's get off the fantasy. You know very well if Tom Thibodeau is coaching the Knicks, Ty Ty will get G League time. Right? Let's be real here. He will get G League time. He will he will he will not see a lot. He will not see rotation minutes. Okay, he won't. That's number one. If they fire Tom Thibodeau and they are hiring a Kenny Atkinson or they're uh, promoting uh, a Johnny Bryant, then they might get a tie tie because he might see rotation minutes under one of those scenarios next year. All right. So that's the possibility. So to me, it's dependent on who the coach is going to be. If you're drafting a tie tie and you're expecting him to play, Tom Thibodeau cannot be your coach. All right? He cannot. Now, if Ty Ty was a real game changer, like if he was CP3 coming out, uh, who came out of Wake Forest, and everybody knew he was going to be special, if he was like that, you know, if he was a, a guard that, or, you know, or a LaMelo Ball, well, you know, they draft him and, and fire Tom because you got to get that guy. Ty Ty's not that guy. He's not on that level. Okay? I'm not saying he's a scrub. He's not. I'm just saying, and I think he's going to be solid. I think he'd be a solid NBA player. I see Reggie Jackson. You know, I think he's going to be like Reggie Jackson, actually. You know, and Reggie Jackson, not now, but Reggie Jackson a few as a younger guy. And so that's why I don't think he's the long-term answer. I don't think 
we should be, we're not looking, they're not looking at him. I don't think they are as a draft choice at all. I don't think so because he won't play. Okay. He been in, and Kenny Payne is now leaving, you know, to go coach Louis, Louisville. Um, so the whole Kentucky thing goes away with him, you know, so no, I don't think he would be an answer at point guard. Then you have, let's talk about Jalen Brunson. And let's talk about the positives and the negatives of Jalen Brunson. Uh, on the positive side, he was a four-year player at Villanova, and he's a proven leader. He's a leader. He has that. Sometimes that stuff is just born. He has leadership qualities. He had it at Villanova, and he has it now on Dallas Maverick. He's a proven leader. What is that? That means he knows he will organize an offense. He knows how to run an NBA offense. He's an efficient shooter. He's a good passer. Okay. Um, you know, he, he's, he's, um, reliable from three levels. You know, he shoots nearly 40% from three. Um, good free throw shooter, good mid range. Okay. So good passer, like I mentioned. So he has attributes that you want in a point guard. Okay. Which, and, Almost most importantly, he's a better point guard than both Alec Burks and Emmanuel Quickly. He's a better point guard. But let's talk about the negative. He's undersized. And that doesn't always hurt. Just because of a guy's size doesn't always hurt him. Like I think of a Kyle Lowry, a Chris Paul. Um, you know, they're undersized as well. But both of them are tremendous defensive players. Fred Van Fleet, they're very, very tremendous defensive players. They will lock you down at the point guard spot or either guard spot, even though they're small. But that's not Jaden Brunson. He's weak on the defensive end. And to be honest with you, I've seen too many years of too many point guards that the Knicks have had who have allowed, you know, free freedom at the point of attack to whoever is, is coming up the court with the basketball as an opponent. And so... That would be my problem with Jalen Brunson. Now, me personally, I would rather they don't get Jalen Brunson, but I'm trying to be real. Again, I think they want Jalen Brunson. I think they, they want him. And so um, we could do a lot worse, you know, put it that way. I'm not a big Jalen Brunson guy, but being realistic, Looking at what we have right now, if Tom is stuck on Alec Burks as his starting point guard, I would rather have Jalen Brunson than Alec Burks as the starting point guard. You know, he won't miss Obi or or if we still have Mitchell Robinson, he won't miss them guys running up the court. He will catch them. He will get them the basketball. OK, um, and he's reliable as a shooter, as well as I mentioned. So but again, he's going to be attacked on a defensive end and he's not a great defender at all. He's not a great defender. And I think that's what kept him as a, um, a six man in Dallas. Um, they started him out of necessity because of injuries and he's had a really good year offensively, but he's still a weak defender. All right. Uh, slow footed and undersized uh, and just not strong enough to deal with NBA guards. He's not like Kemba because Kemba's knee Kemba's playing on one leg. That's a different scenario. Okay. He's better than Kemba in that regard. And he's more reliable. He's more available. Okay. So you're going to, so you're going to have that. And of course, he's going to cost about 20 million a year. Um, Jalen Brunson. So that's Jalen Brunson. Then we have, um, Colin Sexton. Now let's talk about the positives of Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton is a dynamic scorer. I mean, Three levels and, you know, pretty much gets where he wants to get on the court. Quick, fast, uh, athletic, very young. I don't think he's 24 yet. Has already averaged 20 points a game in the NBA before he was hurt. Already was there. Um, you know he's on the court. He's, he's very active. That's the positives. Uh, defensively. He's not that good, but unlike a Jalen Brunson, 
I've seen Colin Sexton play good defense at times when he's motivated to do so. And you would have to, again, assume if Tom Thibodeau is coming back to coach the New York Knicks next season, you have to assume under somebody like that's tutelage under the culture of New York, you know, in terms of the toughness he requires. I think Sexton would fit right in and I think his defense would pick up like Alec Burks was really, really bad. on. No, he was the worst defender in the rotation last season. And he has improved this season. He's still not no all NBA defender now, but he's much better. So, you know, I think that would happen with Colin Sexton being younger, being more pliable, you know, being, being able to be influenced by a coach like a Tom Thibodeau and Thibodeau would love his toughness, you know, and then offensively again, he's an attack dog, you know? And so Sexton to me, I would rather him for all of those reasons than Brunson. But again, Sexton doesn't have the connects with a Leon Rose, with a Tom Thibodeau, you know, with a World Wide West that Brunson does, you know. But I would rather Colin, honestly, just because of all the things I named. His youth, even though Brunson's 25, he's going to be 26 in August. But the youth of, of Colin Sexton, the, the energy, the, the, the toughness, the, the speed, the athleticism, um, and, you know, and, and like I said, I have hopes for him on defense. He's not all NBA defender right now, but I think he has the ability to be a Kyle Lowry level defender on defense. You know, and I think he has a desire because I've seen him. He just doesn't do it consistently, but I've seen him, you know, make defensive plays and do defensive stops. He's capable. Um, so that's Colin Sexton. Uh, of the guys that we have just named, Sexton, Ty Ty. And Brunson, I think I'd like Sexton the best of those three. Then there's Deuce, who we drafted in the second round. Now, again, I've been following. I followed this kid um, starting about a year ago. And I look back on his um, sophomore and his freshman year, as well as uh, his, you know, what he did in the summer. Uh, and every video I've seen of him told me. This guy's a real sleeper. I mean, real sleeper. And I was, you know, very high on him last year, Then, uh, you know, along with Grimes. And the Knicks did end up drafting him. He has shown in the limited minutes here he has received the defensive prowess and the foundation of a great defender that I thought he would be. Uh, but most people don't realize he has offensive game. He can shoot. He can shoot on three levels. Now, weakness He's not a blow by um, guard. He's he's like Brunson in that way. He's not going to blow by you, but he could get by. You. He's not going to cross you over and blow by you offensively, but he can get into the into the paint. He definitely can. Um, he's more crafty about it, like Brunson, right? Like Lowry, like Brunson. That same style, very crafty. He's not like a Chris Paul that's going to cross you up or Allen Iverson that's going to cross you up and leave you standing there wondering what happened. He's not like that, but. He can get to the basket, um, but he is a three-level scorer. He can score at the rim. He can score in the mid-range, and he can score from three. Uh, he just hasn't had the minutes to show it. But um, I like the fact that he, somebody mentioned yesterday, because I, I always consider him a two-year deal because he, um, he has this year at 950 and then next year at 1.5, but there is a club option at 2.5 in his third year. Uh, but that's much cheaper than Colin Sexton. It's much cheaper than Jalen Brunson. Okay. Um, Ty Ty, as I mentioned, would be a rookie and wouldn't get any time. That's the thing too. He's a rookie. And honestly, Ty Ty Washington, I'm going to be conservative about it. He is not head and shoulders better than the other three guys. Okay. He is not like another class from the other three guys. At best, he's with them. Okay, but I don't even think he's as good. A lot of y'all get hyped with the new Christmas presents of these dudes coming out and you start hyping them and you start saying, oh, they're so much better than everybody. No, like all of these centers that are coming out, none of them are better than Mo Bamba. Mo Bamba's been in the NBA three years now and he's learned the NBA game. Okay, and so you can't, don't discount experience in the NBA. Mo Bamba's still young. And he's better than every center that's coming out. 
right now. Okay, any center that's coming out, one of y'all, y'all, y'all need to understand a rookie center, any rookie center is going to have that's the second hardest position to be in the NBA is the five. The first is the point guard. The second is the five spot. Those are the hardest positions to learn because you got to call out the defense. You got to see what's developing. You got to call out screens. You got to protect the paint. You got to get out to the three point line and back. It's the hardest position to learn in the NBA. Okay. And so. There's no rookie center that's coming out. Even Chet Holmgren. Nobody's coming out this year that's going to dominate in their first year. Mo Obama could dominate next year. If given the time. He's ready. He's been, like I said, his third or fourth season. He's ready. Okay? So, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, a rookie point guard. There's no rookie point guards in this class that's going to come out next season and dominate. Okay? Um, like a LaMelo Ball. He came out his first season and dominated. Because that's what kind of player he is. Josh Giddy has that in him. Shea Gillis Alexander has that. You know, point guards that can come out from the gate and dominate. But but that's the rare. That's not something you see all the time. And the Ty Tower and nobody else in this draft is that type of player that's going to come out and dominate in their first year. It's just not out there right now. Okay? So, you to me, I, I discount Ty Tower. So, that leaves Colin Sexton, Jalen Brunston, and Dukes. I, of course, my favorite is Deuce because he's one of my two favorite Knicks. Mitch Robb and Deuce are my two favorite Knicks because of their toughness, their defense, uh, and our, our favorite defense. But as far as Colin or Brunson, I'd want Colin. Okay, I'd want Colin. And I think they're going to cost about the same. I'd want Colin. But as far as being real, and that's what I'm trying to do with y'all today, they're going to try to get Brunson. I think they're going to try to get him. They're going to put in an uh, effort. He's going to give them a meeting with the representatives, with Leon and them. He's going to give them all the opportunity to sign him. Um, and if he wants to come to New York, there's going to be a high chance he signs here. Um, if he does, if he wants to stay in Dallas, we don't have a shot. He'll stay where he is. And a lot of guys are choosing these days to stay with their teams that they want, that they drafted with. A lot of guys are choosing. And that's the way the rules of the NBA are now geared. To, to encourage the player to stay with who he, with who he was drafted. Um, but they did bring in Spencer Dinwiddie, right? So I don't know. you know. And then when Tim Hardaway comes back next year, I don't know what that's going to do. And that may affect Brunson's decision. But realistically, again, being real here, you may or may not like Jalen Brunson. He's not my favorite even. But he's probably going to, they're probably going to get him. And he'll probably be the starting point guard for the New York Knicks next year. And like I said, um, we could do a lot worse. Okay. So that's the point guard situation. Um, I'm trying to be real with you. I'm not, I mean, like I said, my favorite is Dukes. We already got him. He's cheap. I think if you give him a lot more leeway to let him play, you know, he'll show you what he could do. And hopefully still with 14 games left, they will do that eventually. But uh, if we're going to go in the free agent market, I like Colin Sexton. I know some of y'all, I mean, I like Colin Sexton. I think Colin Sexton would be dynamic in the New York Nick uniforms. Talk about box office at Madison Square Garden. Talk about raising the roof. That's Colin Sexton, man. <laughs> there it gone. So, but at the end of the day, they're going to go after Jalen Brunson, whether we like it or not. And that's the thing. We may all have our ideas, what they should do, who's best. But at the end of the day, Tom Thibodeau, Leon Rowe, World Wide West, Allen Houston, they don't care what we think. <laughs> They're going to do what they want, what they think is best for the team. And so I think it's going to end up being uh, Jalen Brunson. I'm not happy about it, but I'm not sad about it. Like I said, you could do a lot worse. I'd rather him than Alec Burks. Uh, and Emmanuel quickly running the point. At least he knows. He's a real point guard. He knows how to run a team offensively. And so I think we'd get from him what we thought we were going to get from Kemba. I think we'd get from Jalen Brunson what we thought we were going to get from Kemba. Um, of course, we did see very recently Deuce McBride put the clamps, I mean the lockdown, on Jalen Brunson, which is why I favor Deuce above all of them. Okay. I favor Deuce above all of them because on the defensive end, there is no doubt he's the best of that crew. I just, them four crew and guards defensively, 
Deuce is head and shoulders elite better than them defensively. No question. Okay. We just need to see what he could do offensively, which I know what he could do. I just want the world to know. And I need him to get an opportunity to do that. But I don't know if they're going to give it to him. So we may see Deuce in another uniform doing what we thought he would do at Madison Square Garden. Trying to be real. Anyway, y'all enjoy your Friday. I'm going to review the game um, tomorrow night, hopefully. Um, enjoy yourselves. Don't let the Knicks ups or downs cause you to be up or down on your weekend. Have a good weekend. Be safe out there. Shalom.